What is the McKinsey solve game, also known as the McKinsey problem solving game, and how do you pass it? Before we begin, I want to say why I'm the right person to discuss the McKinsey solve game. My name is Davis. I'm a former management consultant and the founder of my consulting offer, and I've helped hundreds of aspiring consultants pass the McKinsey solve game on their way to landing their offer at McKinsey. And I want to help you get your McKinsey offer too. All right, let's get started. So what exactly is the McKinsey solve game? The McKinsey problem solving game is a gamified test that McKinsey uses during the recruiting process. You'll encounter the problem solving game between the resume screening and your case interviews. And if you're applying to any practice at McKinsey, this test is almost mandatory for you. It has a time limit of 60 to 90 minutes, at which point you're going to be required to play and solve two of the six possible mini games. We'll go over these mini games in a bit. Two things you should know is that first, you can choose the language in which you take the game. As of now, you can choose between English, Spanish, Portuguese, or Japanese. So pick the language that most resonates with you. Also note that you're allowed to use notes during the assessment and they won't be used for the evaluation. So feel free to take notes. So now that you know what the McKinsey solve looks like, what exactly does it measure? So McKinsey deploys this video game assessment in order to test you on five skills. First is your critical thinking. They wanna know your ability to make thoughtful decisions based on data. Second is decision-making skills, which is the ability to make the best possible decision with a limited time and imperfect information. The third skill is known as metacognition, which is the ability to use and adopt different strategies as situation and information changes. Fourth is situational awareness. This is your ability to perceive what's going on in a complex environment, what it means, and how to think about its effect on the future. Finally is systems thinking, which is the ability to understand how cause and effect work, especially when there are multiple causes going on. As you can see here, all five of these skills are used in day-to-day -day management consulting. In fact, a great consultant will have these skills. And as such, McKinsey uses the McKinsey Solve to evaluate if you have the potential to possess these skills. So how should you prepare? The good news is that the McKinsey Solve does not require any previous business knowledge or gaming experience. You'll be provided with an untimed tutorial at the start of each task to help you become familiar with what you're required to do and how to navigate around the McKinsey Solve platform. When you do take the digital assessment, relax and let yourself absorb the game's environment, the information you're provided, and the problem that you're asked to solve. Remember again, you're allowed to take notes, so you definitely want to take notes. Now let's talk about what you're assessed on. Your performance will be graded on two scores. The first is called the product score, and the second is the process score. The product score measures your level of success in achieving the objectives of the mini games, while process scores are determined by analyzing your patterns during the problem solving process, including every keystroke, mouse movement, and decision that you make. And you'll also get an email telling you whether or not you passed or failed. And you'll get this email usually less than two weeks after taking the test. There'll be no grades and no comments, just simply a pass or fail verdict. Now we'll break down the test, which is we'll take a closer look at each of the six mini games that you might encounter during the McKinsey Solve, as well as what their objectives are, as well as my advice for how you can pass them. Again, there are six of them, but you only will expect to get two. So you do want to know about all six, but you're not going to do all six on the assessment. The first mini game or scenario is called the ecosystem building game. In this mini game, you have to create an ecosystem with eight species from a list of 40. There are three key objectives to this game. The first is that the ecosystem must form a continuous food chain. Second, there must be a calorie surplus for every pair of predator and prey. That is the prey, the one being eaten, produces more calories than what the predator will consume. Third, the ecosystem must match the terrain specifications of the chosen location. Because there's so much information in this game, the biggest challenge that you're going to have is making sure that you can process the data and then prioritize what needs to get done. Therefore, my advice for passing this particular mini game is to follow a planned procedure rather than just randomly picking species because the scenario will test you on how well you build a plan, stick to it, and adapt your strategy as needed versus abandoning your strategy right away. This is because consultants have to do this day in and day out. They have to form a strategy and adopt it over time, but they're not building a strategy, abandoning it five seconds later because things go wrong. So in order to pass this, stay calm, process the information, and then prioritize what you need to do. The second scenario or mini game is called the plant defense. The objective of this mini game is to protect the plant from pests and disease. You'll need to analyze the threats and choose the appropriate defense mechanisms, such as pesticides or natural predators, to ensure that the plant's survival and maximizes yield. My strategy here is for you to see the larger picture. In other words, plan ahead for the long term and think about the future invaders rather than just focusing on the ones that are presently there. If you've ever played a board game like chess or Catan, you'll know that you're just not preparing for the next move, but you're also thinking about how your next move will help out with future moves. This is what you want to be able to do in the plant defense game is think about not just the present, but the future. 
This is because McKinsey is testing your ability to see the big picture because consultants are hired to think about the long term and not just the short term gains for their team and their clients. So they wanted to be able to use the plant defense game to see if you can do the same. The third scenario or mini game you might encounter is called Red Rock Study. The Red Rock Study was rolled out originally in 2022. And more recently, on March 2023, this game came back with an updated version. Its format is different from all the other mini games. In the Red Rock Study, you'll play the role of a researcher with tasks following a research process. Within 25 minutes, you will be instructed step by step to move through the three stages. The first stage is the investigation stage. Here, you'll be presented with a research objective and an article featuring past data. The task is to collect the most relevant data points to your research journal. Then you'll enter the second stage, which is the analysis stage. In this stage, there are three calculation questions related to the original research objective. The good news is that you'll be provided a virtual calculator as well as the ability to go back to the article if the data is not enough. The third and final stage is the report stage. Here, you're going to create a summary and visualize the data into a suitable graph that reflects what you found in the analysis stage. Overall, this game will test you on three skills, your ability to read exhibits, your ability to do math, and your ability to data analyze. And if you've been preparing for the case interviews, you might have thought, hmm, that sounds a lot like the skills I developed in the case interview. The good news is that this game is all about that, which is that if you've been preparing for the case interview and practicing, you're already ahead of this, since the format of this game is very similar to the case interview format that McKinsey uses and expects for you to practice. You can see why now that McKinsey wants to use this assessment, which is it's very similar to a case interview. So if you can solve these, you have a higher chance of being able to be successful when it comes to the actual McKinsey case itself. But if you are new to case interviews or still developing your case interview muscles, you can actually check out our series on how to master the McKinsey case interview. I'll link it in the description below so that you're ready for both the Red Rock study game as well as your case interviews. The fourth game or scenario that you might encounter is called a disaster management. In the disaster management mini game, you're required to identify the type of natural disaster that has just happened to the ecosystem using limited given information and to reallocate that ecosystem to maximize the chance that it survives. With these two objectives in mind, here's how you deal with each. First, you have to identify the disaster. My advice here is to start with a hypothesis and then test it against the data that you're given. Use all the possible data that you can possibly see in order to disprove your hypothesis. So for example, let's say that you look at the information, you think, oh, this might've been a volcano eruption. But then you notice, oh wait, the temperature is really cold. This is probably not a volcano. Then you get to go back and think, well, maybe this was a blizzard. And then you'll go on to iterate. So that's how you identify the disaster. The second part of the game is relocating the ecosystem. So this is actually just a more complicated version of the location selection in the ecosystem building game that I mentioned earlier. There's one caveat though, which is that you have to first rule out the locations where it's not gonna work. So what you wanna be able to do here is go through and look at what's the requirement for the terrain or ecosystem you want, and then start ruling out. So sometimes when you have a lot of ecosystems and a lot of choices for you to relocate, start by eliminating it. The best way to get ahead in this game is to use the process of elimination and to pay attention to the details. What I want you to do is read and analyze the species characteristics to find their most common traits. Then use those traits to pick an optimal location. If you find that there are too many locations to consider, you will want to use the process of elimination further to remove the worst ones. This game will test your analytical as well as your logical thinking skills. And this is what McKinsey consultants do day to day is that we take a lot of information and we think about what information is going to help us remove a solution. So sometimes, even though people think that consultants are hired to solve problems, sometimes the answer to solving a problem is eliminating what cannot be the solution. And we do that through a similar process of elimination. So this is what this game is testing on. The fifth game or scenario is called the disease management. In this mini game, you're required to identify an infection point of a disease within an ecosystem and predict the next individual who's going to be affected. This game will increase with difficulty over time. So in the beginning, you're going to start with three to five factors of a species, including name, age, weight, and three snapshots of disease spread. You'll be given three time periods, for example, time one, time two, and time three, in order to help solve the problem. Note again that the difficulty will increase as the game goes on. But luckily, there's only one main objective here. You have to identify the rules of the infection. So you can think of this as a pattern recognition game. This game is going to test your ability to see cause and effect, so pay attention to what changes are happening, the causes, and what's the effect it has on the game. Being able to understand cause and effect is a skill that consultants use on a day-to-day -day basis in helping their clients. Because you want to be able to understand, for example, if a client is trying to reduce their costs, what are the causes of their costs? And how do you reverse engineer it so that they have a lower cost without harming their business revenues? My advice here, if you want to succeed in this game, is to observe and keep track of the species. You want to take note of what changes, what happens to the population through the different periods of time, 
in order to make accurate predictions and identify which individual will be affected next. Again, this is a pattern recognition game, so really pay attention to details here. The sixth and final game that you might encounter is called the migration management. In this mini game, your task is to control the migration of 50 animals. The group of animals will carry various resources, typically four to five different resources like water and food. And each resource has an amount ranging typically from 10 to 30. Each turn in the game, five animals will die and five of each resource is consumed. The objective is to effectively manage the migration process while ensuring the survival of the animals and proper allocation of resources. You're gonna have multiple stages to this game and each stage usually takes three to five turns to complete. In total, you need to complete 15 stages within a time limit of 37 minutes. During this game, you have the option to choose different routes for the animals' migrations. Throughout the stages, there are specific points where you're able to collect additional animals and resources. These points offer the opportunity to gather extra animals or resources, with quantities ranging from one to three of each type. However, the game does not disclose the exact number of animals or resources in advance. The objective here is to help the animals arrive at the destination with minimum loss and with specific amounts of resources. So here's the strategy I recommend for this game. Take all the information given to you, then pick the route that will provide you with the most animals and resources. With more animals and resources, you have a better chance of ending the game with a high score. All right, so that wraps up the McKinsey Solve and the six games that you might encounter. As you can see, working through each of these scenarios takes you through a gamified version of what management consultants do every single day, which is understanding the problem, analyzing the data, making decisions based on limited time and information, and recommending solutions. This is why McKinsey uses the McKinsey Solve to evaluate candidates. McKinsey wants to know your potential to be a great consultant. And as we wrap up, here are a few additional final tips to help you excel in the McKinsey Solve. The first tip is to remain calm and focused throughout the assessment. Take advantage of the tutorial at the beginning of each mini game because again, it's untimed. So really take that time to learn so that when the game starts, you can pay attention and think strategically before making any decisions. Second, practice decision-making skills in advance. While no specific preparation is required, engaging in activities that enhance your problem-solving skills are gonna be beneficial for this test. This can include playing strategy games like Catan or even practicing case interviews. For practicing case interviews, you'll be able to find videos on our channel. Finally, take advantage of the untimed tutorial phase to familiarize yourself with the game mechanics and objectives. All right, that's it. That's all the information that you need in order to give you an advantage when it comes to the McKinsey Solve. And if you're taking an online assessment like the McKinsey Solve, I'd like to help you even more. If you comment below the name of the firm and the test that you're taking, I'll share with you additional free resources. For example, if you comment McKinsey Solve below, I'll send you some additional resources. And if you're 100% serious about becoming a management consultant at McKinsey or another amazing consulting firm, I'd love to help you. My team and I are former consulting recruiters and interviewers who help aspiring consultants land interviews, prepare for assessments like the McKinsey Solve, and pass their interviews so they land their consulting offer. To date, we have an 89.6% success rate. That is 9 out of every 10 applicant who works with us land at least one offer, and we've helped over 700 people already land a consulting job. So if you're serious about becoming a management consultant and want to hear about how we can help you, click the link below to book a free call with my team. And during the call, what we're going to do is learn a little bit more about your background, your goals, and then build a plan with you in order to get there. So if you're struggling with the McKinsey Solve, we'll figure out a plan to get you to pass it. If you're preparing for the case interviews, we'll help you make a plan for that as well. But you don't take my word for it. Hear from Eve, who saw one of our videos, both the call, and now works at McKinsey. I'll see you in the next video.